Have you ever played a Pokemon game? Of course you have, what a stupid question. And if you haven't, I highly recommend going out and playing at least one of them. I think there's been a couple over the years. Well, there are a few hacks out there of them, and one of them is Pokemon Chaos Black. Now, I purchased this knowing full well what I was going into. It was just going to be a hack version of one of the Pokemon games, this one being Fire Red. But what I didn't realise was how bad this was going to be. And rather than me do a full review of this one, I figured I'd show you my full playthrough of the game instead, to really let you see what's going on with this game. So, rather than still talking, let's crack on. The story is nonsense. Basically, four poker gods were sealed in four legendary balls, and after hundreds of years they've been located on some made up region called Bules or Belize, or it's just a fake place. Somebody named Isil wants them, and it's up to you to follow in your sister's footsteps, whoever that is, and become a Pokemon Master, because as we all know, if you become a Pokemon Master, you can solve all the world's problems. From there, the game is basically Pokemon Fire Red, but with a few minor and some few major changes to the gameplay. One of the major ones is when Oak first gives you your starter Pokemon. Instead of your usual choice of Bulbasaur, Squirtle or Charmander, you're presented with these abominations of life. You have Magage, Bleak or Floron. Hoping that if I talk to Gary or Oak again would give me the option to have some real Pokemon and that this was all just some elaborate joke to test me, I reluctantly chose Magic for the sole fact that he looks like a half ass Rayman, which I nicknamed him, and wanted to see what he would evolve into. After beating Gary, it was finally time to begin my journey, so after a quick heal at Mum's, I ventured out onto the main road. Along with all these sorry excuses for Pokemon, the layout of the floor has also been changed as well, so it's not just a simple zigzag all the way up to the main route. Instead, you have to go over loads of jumps, go through large patches of grass, and stuff like that becomes really infuriating at the start of the game, when you just simply want to get up to the next city. It's also going to become a very big issue later on, but we'll get to that in a bit. Unsurprisingly, walking through tall grass will lead into encountering some form of wild Pokemon, and the first new one that I actually ran into was something called Taz. There's a lot of creativity gone into this one, what with its bull body and not much else, and based on the assumptions, I figured this was just a reskin of a Caterpie, as most of all of these Pokemons will just be some form of a hack. Funnily enough, it was, but as I had no Pokeballs, there was no point in even trying to catch it, so I just battled my way up through and even learned Thundershock along the way. Following the normal route, I went straight to the Pokemart to pick up Oak's parcel and headed back the way I came. After the delivery, I received my Pokedex, and finally my true journey would begin. So after battling some Pokemon called Shizards and getting screwed over trying to get through the grass and getting jumped in the same patch twice without even moving, I decided to make my way up towards Pewter City. Again, with the terrain being changed up, this was a bit more of a trial and error exercise, but I did manage to run into and catch a Rattata, which I was glad to see, if only because it looked so normal. Once healing up at Pewter's Pokemon Center, I decided to go level up for a bit before I took on Brock. So heading back down to the patch of grass below Pewter City, that's when I ran into something called a Grag, a weird dinosaur looking thing that had its back to me and obviously gave no Fs about me whatsoever. Cool I thought, it's only level 5, piece of cake, we'll catch that in one go. No, no and no. This asshat took my tackle like I got hit by a newspaper ball, and shot back with an Aurora Beam, nearly one-shotting me in the process. After I'd stopped mouthing off at the TV that something like this was in the starting areas, I decided to try my best to catch it. With only three Pokeballs left and it on minimum health, it fainted, but I was determined to catch one. Once I had healed up, it was back down outside Pewter to find me another Grag. Instead I ran into Minite, which, while having the moveset of a Spiro or Firo, looked like a marshmallow that had been found behind a sofa with other crud stuck to it. While I partially commend the person who made this hack with taking the time to change some of the sprites, the least they could have done though was change the Pokedex entries. Huge and magnificent wings, maybe I need to put my glasses on. Grinding until I finally found another Grag and getting trolled again, I decided to give up and went on my way to go mess up Brock. After vine whipping my way to victory, I decided on one last attempt at getting that git of a Grag and in the process of all my maggage into Voltai, looking like a Gumby reject and rendering my Rayman nickname stupid. It also made the sprites have a wonderful yellow box around it in battle, which was just awesome. After a few more murdering sessions and catching an Able, a sorry looking attempt at god knows what, I once again gave up and continued my journey towards the next gym. This meant going through another redesigned area filled with impossible to dodge trainers and making it over towards Mount Moon. 
Thanks to all the previous times of trying to catch Greg, all of these fights were basically just an exercise in just mashing buttons to get through them as quickly as possible. Being prepared ahead of time, I used some repels once I entered Mount Moon, so I didn't have to deal with the joys of constant Zubat battles, which hadn't been changed and made my way through as quickly as I could. Making my way down to where the super nerd was salivating over the two fossils, I quickly dispatched his team and chose the closest fossils I didn't really care either way. And this is where my journey ended. Normally you'd just beat him, grab the fossil, make your way out the cave, but in this hack they've replaced where you're meant to go with water, making it impossible to get through. Now I know what you're thinking, why don't you just use surf and go across it? Well, there's a simple reason for that, three of them actually. One, I don't have a Pokemon that can use Surf. Two, I don't have Surf to even teach a Pokemon. And three, even if I did, I don't have the badge to even use Surf. So I am completely stuck in this bit. I tried running at full speed towards the water, glitching into walls, seeing if you could jump down from anywhere else, but no, you are stuck. The only way to actually progress is to use cheats like a wall hack. Now, I'm running this on a Game Boy Advance player, and I'm not using an emulator for it. So if I was, I could just use something like a Game Shark and Action Replay code and then quite easily get past this bit in the game. But I can't do that. So I'm screwed. After not knowing what to do, people even suggested buying the Magikarp from the guy in the Pokemon Center on some walkthroughs and videos. But that's not going to do jack all. It can't learn stuff, and I still don't have the friggin badge to even use it if I wanted to. Plus I'm not wasting my time leveling up a Magikarp to then watch it do absolutely jack all. So finally I walked around the grass near Mount Moon for a bit, encountering an S-Splime, a blob that basically looked like it came from the same spot that the Midnight crawled out from, and saw one last Grag, and I still couldn't catch it. So with that I just said, I'm out, and I powered off the game. And that's it. Unless I want to start playing on an emulator, that's as far as I'm ever going to get in the game. Or if I want to buy an action replay of GameShark, yeah great, I really want to spend more money on this piece of crap. To be honest, I already knew before going in that this was an illegal hack, but I was still expecting to actually make some progress in the game. But the sprite redesigns, the level layout, everything about it, I don't really want to ever play it ever again. And to be honest, I can't really recommend this one, unlike some of the others that I've played. Well, there's only one left in my delivery from these games, and it is the amazing and well-known Pokemon Cop version. Prepare yourselves.